In the wake of patch 20's release, we got a lot of big news around Fallout 76. We of course have some of the aftermath and responses from Bethesda on the patch itself, as well as some of the backlash it was initially receiving. I want to discuss that, discuss some things that perhaps were misleading in my videos, and just overall where things stand right now. But even totally independent of that, we just recently got a new Fallout 76 trailer, as well as a roadmap that actually has some concrete dates on it from Bethesda, which is very exciting. Over the past couple of months, they haven't been super great with providing update dates or just a general timeline they've been rather vague with, but now for the next few months, we know exactly what they're going to be releasing, which is exciting, and I want to touch on a lot of that. If you guys enjoy the content, you can leave a like or get subscribed. It really does help the channel, and just me personally, it's been a huge boost as of late. But first and foremost, let's take a look at the Seasons Grind, one of the major new feature additions to Fallout 76 with Patch 20, and something that's going to kind of be here permanently. So in my initial video covering seasons, linked in the eye if you missed it, I described how if you complete all of the weekly and daily rewards, you will not technically have enough experience to get to level 100 across the course of an entire season. Although that is technically correct, at that point you would really only have somewhere in the range of 215,000 out of a 220,000 that you would need. It also isn't really correct because it is almost 100% confirmed that you would be over the line. So the way seasons are broken down right now, you have the daily and weekly challenges that you can complete for experience, but then even further, you have the repeatable just gain experience. Every 10,000 experience equals 100 score rewards. So if you are somebody who is actually playing on a daily basis, completing all these other challenges like completing events, killing legendaries, you'll almost certainly have enough by the end because time and time again you'll also be getting enough experience per day to progress that one so again technically correct but also not really in practice and I just wanted to clarify that there was also this really helpful calculator set up by a user on reddit known as a car knocked wherein you could figure out based on the average amount of experience you're earning per day how many days it'll take you to finish this assuming you're also doing some of the other grinds or even if you're not doing some of the other grinds on a daily basis although in general I think experience gain will go up on one and we do have public teams, which is a huge new addition and a great way to earn more experience. Two of the public teams being focused for legendary kills, you get bonus experience for completing events, which is a big one, you get bonus experience, or the flat one that increases intelligence, as intelligence does guarantee additional experience in game. And you can actually go a high intelligence build to progress this quite a bit faster. Although one thing that may be helpful now, or just got a huge buff with the recent update, is herd mentality. Herd mentality makes it so that if you are in a team, you get plus three to all special stats. But if you're not in a team, you will get a debuff to all special stats. Considering now at any point you could be in a public team, it is pretty easy to proc that bonus and just have it always be there. You actually, at least for right now, don't even need team members. If you just create a public team, even if nobody joins, you'll still proc the bonus. And went from one people are a little bit more wary of to one you should basically always take. And all this calculation is being done on the big assumption that you are earning the same amount of score per week from those dailies and weeklies, which I don't think has technically been confirmed anywhere. And even just at one point, we know there'll be a weekend where you'll get double score from the dailies, a double experience weekend, but focused on score. So that is a big change change in the data also. And throughout all of this, I've seen a lot of people saying how long the grind is is somewhat getting blown out of proportion, and although I do understand where that view is coming from, I still don't agree. Because at the end of the day, it's never easy. You will have to play several hours per day, and although for some people that seems like nothing because they are very hardcore and dedicated fans, for a lot of people, they just aren't interested. There are many weeks where I've played Fallout 76 seven days in a row right after a lot of new content. Right now, there isn't a lot of new content. There's a lot of grinds I can continue working on, but I just don't have interest in that. As such, even though these first couple of weeks, it'll be pretty easy to keep up with the score system. As it does go on and on, I think it'll get more and more tedious and grindy and you'll see more people just not wanting to put in those few hours. There's a lot of ways to spend a few hours each day that you can improve things and working towards cosmetics in this game is not something I'm too keen on. But again, you don't have to do the grind all the way to the end. You can just get halfway there, even buy your way through part of it if you'd rather go that route. Although speaking of some of the backlash on the season system, we do have some responses from Bethesda as well as a few additional things that are problemsome. One of the big ones that I didn't initially cover in my video because I kind of assumed this is what would happen. Before Seasons came out, it was described how 
The primary way to get score rewards would be completing weekly and daily challenges, but you also could complete public events or get experience. Of course, the experience version did end up coming to fruition. Now, as you gain experience endlessly, you just gain score endlessly. But with public events, it doesn't quite work that way, as the way it works is there are weekly and daily challenges for completing events or public events. But once you complete that challenge, if you keep doing public events outside of gaining experience, you are not getting any direct rewards. One of the crazy things about this is, even though that's not a feature, I saw some people saying, oh no, I am gaining score by completing public events even after I completed all the other challenges, which is just completely untrue. And Bethesda has responded to this, describing how it was a mistake in their frequently asked questions and will not be a feature of this system. So there is no plans to make it so right now, at least when you complete a public event, you just get score as a raw value. While they do mention how it could be a future improvement they bring to the system, I feel like an easy win here, especially with some of the pushback initially on this system, would just be to add a repeatable public events challenge like they have with the repeatable experience challenge. Make it a smaller amount of score, but if you do five or 10 public events, you get 100, 200, 300 score. Completing 10 public events would still take you a long time. Outside of that, we also saw a response from Jeff Gardner on Twitter, how we're going to make the ammo converter much more user friendly as soon as we're able. Sorry it didn't live up to the hype, but make sure to claim it so you have it when we do. Right now in game, the ammo converter has a couple of problems. One, the exchange rates are kind of bad, although I feel like that's not really even one of the biggest ones. That's frustrating, but there's a lot of people that are just sitting on ammo that is otherwise useless, so they don't really mind that the exchange rates aren't good. The far larger issue is how frustrating it is to use the interface and actually convert ammo from one form to another. So it is really nice to see this response almost immediately after the update went live and that it will be getting addressed. Although I do find this response interesting in a couple of ways. Firstly, when is this fix coming? One of the big issues with Fallout 76, at least in my eyes, has been Bethesda will release something that's pretty broken and then fix it at some point in the future, but sometimes that future update may be really late. Like even just with Wastelanders, it released mostly bug-free, but with a couple of pretty bad issues. Some new bugs that you would hope to see fixed in a timely manner for a big DLC. Except in reality, the next update came five weeks later, which is just kind of crazy to me. Also, how he mentions, make sure to claim it so you have it when we do. The fact that the ammo converter is in the score system is weird. Technically, Bethesda has described that all the items in the score system right now may be available via other means in the future, but it would be very, very odd if something as fundamental as an ammo converter, especially once it actually becomes useful, is a limited time exclusive to score. Like you would hope a player who joins in, let's say 11 weeks after this season ends, would still have an opportunity somehow to get that. But at least based off this wording, that could not be a thing. And of all the things in the score system, that is the one that I feel like definitely should be just posted on the Atomic Shop as a free item, preferably, but even if it's just a couple hundred points. And for those of you curious about this interface, it actually was a copy-paste by Bethesda, or at least somewhat of a copy-paste. They were repurposing one of the other terminal interfaces in the game right now. That's how it got that way. So although lazy, it's not like somebody actually designed this thinking it was a good idea. It was more so just being lazy and copy and pasting. But at least with both of those, we're getting responses and with the ammo machine a fix. I think if it actually had a good interface and sliders, like, you know, the trade menu, it would be a very valuable tool for those that just want to get rid of old ammo they've been stockpiling for the past year and a half. Although something else that has popped up as people have progressed through the ranks is something with the ghillie suits. This particular one you unlock at rank 12, and although it looks cool, if you crouch or sometimes just move around too quickly, this happens. So part of the ghillie suit will just remain floating above you as you're standing there crouch. And honestly, in a way, this is kind of hilarious, but also just another one of those things like, really? This feels like a novice mod author mistake or somebody who wasn't testing their work thoroughly enough. Like, you can take the few extra seconds to make sure crouching works in all of your new outfits slash cosmetics. Although a separate issue that has popped up around the season system is in actually earning score and progressing seasons. For a while now, Fallout 76 has had a bug where challenges would autocomplete. I've seen numerous explanations as to why exactly this happens, some related to Nuclear Winter, others not. Although, fortunately, with Patch 20 and of course the overhaul to challenges and how it becomes a critical part of progressing the score system, Bethesda asserted that this bug would be addressed, except it 
seems like it wasn't, as it's still in the game. So now what Yeezys are finding is that several of their challenges will just auto-complete. And you might be like, well, okay, what's the big deal in that? They don't have to do them. Well, the problem is they're auto-completing and not awarding score. I've had several people reach out to me directly about this, saying they were affected, some people losing hundreds of score, others losing in the thousands of score. It's not totally clear here how this works. It seems like for some, it is connected to Nuclear Winter, for others, it's not, and they don't even play Nuclear Winter, so it's almost certainly unrelated. We got a response from Bethesda a couple of days ago saying, I just wanted to acknowledge that we've seen some reports on this and we are investigating, and how it was meant to be addressed in Update 20. Since then, there haven't really been responses. It was technically a holiday on Friday in the US, so that might be the reason. But even still, this is very, very frustrating if you're affected by this. Missing out on a couple thousand score can really screw up the overall grind that you are doing. And just really, I think more so than anything else, it's demotivating. If you're logging on, grinding through some of the challenges in the day, and then notice, oh, these auto-completed and didn't award me experience, I wouldn't want to continue grinding. What if it happens again when you're about to finish one? And to be clear with this one, it seems unrelated to the other completion glitch, wherein with some of the weekly events, if you complete just three out of the five challenges, you'll get awarded the score. So a lot of people thought they weren't getting any score when they completed all five, it was just in reality you got it beforehand. This time it seems like no, these are dailies and people are getting nothing. Which speaking of one of the other issues on the Atomic Shop, there are several problems with the Screaming Eagle skin, there's clipping on the animations, there's only a front sight that's misaligned, but one I actually missed that is almost worse than all of those, if you attach a muzzle to this, the old muzzle will just totally clip through the new one, and it looks pretty bad. Now, fortunately, this one, you really can't see too much from a first-person perspective, and I'm sure, large in part, this is pretty easy to miss in-game. You're not going to be really hyper-focused on the barrel. It's just another instance where you have to go, really, Bethesda? Really? And although saying really, Bethesda, is something I've been doing a lot in this video, now let's say, really, or just, what are you doing, IGN? I talked about this somewhat at the end of my video on the update, but I wanted to highlight the complete saga here. So if you're not aware, about a month ago, it was listed on the IGN Summer of Gaming how Fallout 76 would have a roadmap gameplay video at the IGN Summer of Gaming on June 18th and how this was an exclusive. Even before all of this, somebody from IGN reached out in several Fallout community discords about questions for an interview he was doing with Bethesda, specifically seeking questions that maybe weren't answered in the AMA because it was actually right around that time when he was asking for these. So June 18th comes, many people are excited, thinking this could be like one of those trailers we got at E3, except there was no E3, so perhaps it's coming during this event. Except on the day of June 18th, this was mysteriously pulled and just gone. All the while, we heard nothing from IGN or Bethesda, but then, about a week later it pops up again on the schedule for June 30th, which coincides with Patch 20's release date. So I thought, oh cool, they're going to release Patch 20 and also tease some future content a little bit. Except what we got was an interview about Patch 20, going over all of the new features that was clearly filmed about a month prior, because it didn't actually mention how two of the major new features were delayed, and in that interview they give a rough estimate as to a release date, hopefully by the end of June, but of course on that day, before that interview came out, the patch was already live, so it just left me and many others scratching my head like, why did IGN sit on this for so long? And what on earth caused the initial delay from June 18th to June 30th? Although the the interview overall didn't really contain much new information because 95% of the new info was already added in game. There were a few things that were interesting. It was described by Bethesda how on the opening weekend of the public TS there were 1500 users active, some details on One Wasteland, how it was planned for patch 22, how there'll be basically level ranges for different areas. So some areas will still be viewed as more difficult even with this comprehensive rebalance. And the overall goal is to make it so a high level and a low level player can play together and both of them have somewhat of a challenge against enemies. And one line they actually gave via this was how, let's say, an enemy would do 25% damage to both players. So on a low level player, that would be a relatively small amount, but on a super high level player, it could be a decent chunk of damage, but it would affect them roughly the same. So on the PTS right now, it was data mined this true damage characteristic. And I wonder if that is how this is going to work, if enemies will just do almost percent health damage, because that could be really big and really devastating for some builds. So that was the interview from IGN. It didn't really ask any questions that would have been asked in the AMA, there really wasn't a ton of great information from it, but it also was made even more perplexing because the trailer I think a lot of us expected to get during this event, but we didn't get during this event, dropped literally the next morning, as on the very next day in the early hours of 
that day, Bethesda dropped the Summer Updates trailer for Fallout 76, which very much so is in the theme of an E3-esque trailer, exactly what I and many others expected from IGN. I don't know why, but I just found that entire timeline to be hilarious, but looking at the trailer itself, it doesn't reveal a ton. Most of what is shown here was either already on the PTS or is in-game right now. It's a summer update trailer. We got a good chunk of the summer updates already. If you haven't watched it, I do encourage you to do so. I'll have a link to it down below, but just Bethesda or whoever makes these Fallout 76 trailers does such a good job. Even though I know and have played almost all of this content, it still is so well put together and fun to watch. The part that is new and somewhat feeling is actually this end point where we see Atlas Observatory being built up, but we'll return to that in a moment. Something that provides great context on this new trailer is the recently released roadmap from Bethesda. It's technically described as a community roadmap, not a regular roadmap, but it is pretty revealing. As the next thing on the horizon is actually something else that was just recently announced and pretty big, and that is how on July 9th, Xbox Game Pass will be getting Fallout 76, which is really big. If you're not familiar, Xbox Game Pass is basically a monthly subscription service, now for both PC and consoles, or an Ultimate Edition where it's both, wherein you subscribe to this and get unlimited access to all of the games included. And what it'll likely mean is that Fallout 76 will see a pretty big player bump when it gets added to this, and just overall it seems to be a pretty healthy way to have concurrent players. Fallout 76 isn't free to play, but it has many characteristics of a free to play game, and overall I think this will be good for the game. It'll give a lot of people the opportunity to try out some of that new Wastelanders content, as well as all the future future content that is on the way. Although something else interesting about this on the roadmap, it is described how the Xbox Game Pass and Appalachia Starter Bundle will release on July 9th. And what this likely will be is more or less a way for Bethesda to monetize what is otherwise a free addition to Game Pass. So you have this influx of new players and now you have this thing you could buy if you want to throw some money at the game and if you're enjoying the game that does kind of give you a jump start or at least that's what it seems like based off the title. They did something like this with cosmetics for Wastelanders, the Raider and Settler bundles even though the update was free. And I do suspect this Appalachia starter bundle will in fact be not something in the Atomic Shop but something on the Microsoft Store or on the Steam Store. Because right now on the Steam database you could see a listing for a new DLC, much so in the style of those Raider or Settler bundles that we currently don't know what it is. It was added right around the start of June. That is pure speculation, technically based off data mines right now, we don't know anything about this bundle. But to speculate a bit further, I wouldn't be shocked if two of the big new things included with this, outside of maybe a couple of skins or other useful or handy things, are the lunchboxes as well as the vault tech supply kits. The reason I say that is, both lunchboxes and vault tech supply kits are really useful starting out items. The supply kits give you a bunch of junk, which of course, as you're trying to play the game, whether it be building, crafting, or repairing, you need junk as well as the lunchboxes give you bonus experience, which as you're trying to level up, that's probably something you'd want. Currently, both of those are exclusive to the season system, but I wouldn't be shocked to see them added to here and potentially added to the Atomic Shop at a later date. It's just speculation by me, it just seems like something that's probably going to happen at one point or another. We can see some of the other more minor things on the horizon, a purveyor sale, the ability to buy season ranks with atoms, a double experience weekend, but then one of the notable ones, a high score weekend with double dailies. So Bethesda did clarify this on the forums about how this is specifically just those daily rewards rewards, not the weekly rewards, but that is a pretty big deal to have double or two times the rewards for what will likely be four days. I say that because a lot of times the way this will work is at around noon on Thursday, this double experience will begin and it'll end at noon on Monday. Technically the daily rewards reset at noon Eastern time on Monday. So I suspect it won't actually encompass those Monday challenges. From there in August, things really do start to pick up as we see the release of patch 21 with a colossal problem, but then far more interesting, we do have the Fortifying Atlas event, which seems to be broken up into two segments. One of those happening from August 8th to 17th with the Alpha side, as well as 29th to September 9th with the Bravo side. So how exactly this will work, I'm not totally sure. Right now in game, Atlas Observatory has been overhauled and based off data mines from the PTS, we know a lot about what this event will entail. More or less, there'll be a new NPC at this location named Russell Dorsey. You'd actually find a note he left in game right now about how he'll be 
right back, and Russell Dorsey intercepted some messages from the Brotherhood of Steel, which we should also be able to intercept, describing how they're on their way to Atlas Observatory and we should be establishing supplies there for their eventual arrival. Now, I don't know exactly how this will differ from the Alpha to the Bravo stage, but we know that part of this event will actually be donating supplies to Russell or just this location. And it seems like as we do so, the location will actually change. This was speculated on before, but now in the trailer, it seems all but confirmed, which is really cool. It's like a community-wide event, probably spanning all three consoles, where I'm going to guess once we hit certain milestones on supplies donated, we'll see things like the wall go up or the helipad be constructed. There are a secondary set of messages from Roger Maxson to the first expeditionary force, AKA the Brotherhood of Steel team on their way to Appalachia. So perhaps that's how everything fits in with the Bravo side of this. The first one is a limited time event where you actually can donate things as well as get some of those cosmetic rewards. It looks like there'll be a Collectron for the Brotherhood as well as some outfits. And that's actually really cool. It's something I've been asking Bethesda to do for a very, very long time. Give us a way to change the world collectively as a community because that's just cool and it feels rewarding. Although some other interesting things around this, we do see the return of Meet Week and also daily developer and community streams for QuakeCon. I do wonder if at QuakeCon we don't get a larger trail for fall and winter as there'll probably be more eyes on QuakeCon this year, but as it described in the original QuakeCon digital announcement tweet how there's a few fun secrets. Maybe we'll get some more details on the Fallout TV show, but I definitely hope we get another trailer like this one except for the second half of the year. Although also interesting about patch 22, we could see that legendary perks were delayed all the way to that. Based off this, it looks like patch 22 is going to be a very big one, assuming all of this content, one wasteland, season two, daily ops, and legendary perks drop in that one singular patch. But considering legendary perks went from a release date of June 30th all the way to some point in September, it looks like Bethesda is really listening to some of that feedback. They described how they're delaying those to incorporate feedback and we might actually see some real comprehensive overhauls here. Overall, it looks like for the next month or so, it's going to be fairly sparse with Fallout 76 and a ton of new content to really play, which is kind of also true for the past month. We just got a new grind as well as public teams, but again, those inherently don't have a new content outside of just rewards. Although when it does come to some of this future content, we should know more soon, as Bethesda also has announced that the public test server is returning. It's planned to go up this week with update 21 listed on it. It's not totally clear how different that'll actually be considering a lot of the update 21 content was already on the public test server, but there of course is the potential for some very interesting data mines, especially as we approach that next big content content update with Steel Dawn and the return of the Brotherhood. Although it is pretty interesting that now we could actually track the player count of this game with some semblance of accuracy via Steam. We could see that there was a gradual decline over the past month or month and a half or so. Wastelanders came out, everyone beat it, and then there just wasn't much else to do. Although the endgame grind was interesting, at least at first, I think it got sour fast for a lot of people. Although even just before the patch and the weekend prior, you could see a big jump in player count. It was getting down to six to 8,000, and it climbed all the way back up to 10, 11, and even now 13,000 with the new patch. Still not quite Wastelanders numbers, but it is just interesting to see how this game is performing overall. The number I'm particularly excited for is to see how other big DLCs compared to the release of Wastelanders how good some of these subsequent DLCs will be at actually getting people to play the game again. Although again, an important reminder, this is a very small subset of the overall audience, not including consoles, not including Bethesda.net players, or even in the future, Xbox Game Pass PC players won't be represented here. Although one final thing I wanted to touch on is with the most recent update to the game, I've just been getting a ton of crashing. I'm not totally sure why this could be a thing, especially considering I had no problems on the PTS and I did play that quite extensively, but with patch 20 on live servers, I have now received five crashes in just the two days since this update came out, compared to basically none in the month before it. it. It seems like now as the crash number keeps going up and up, it's not just a coincidence. And to be clear with these crashes, two of them were server disconnects, three of them were crashes to desktop. And in different modes too, one was a nuclear winter, one was just while connecting to a server initially, I crashed to desktop, and then a couple of other just playing in adventure mode. But overall, that's gonna wrap it up for this one, a big recap of all of the news to come out in the wake of patch 20, of which there was actually a lot of news. Hopefully you guys found this one informative. As always again, I thank you for watching, but with that, I hope to see you all later.